listening is like being a wide receiver. Okay. And being a wide receiver, you have, when, when the ball is passed to you, you have to keep your eyes on the ball mm. and see it all the way in until you catch it. And then you can look in other directions because once you take your eyes off the ball, then you lose the ball. And then when you're trying to find it again, it's kind of too late. The ball can, you can probably, you might catch it. You might fumble it and the ball might get intercepted or you might entirely miss the ball because you took your eyes off of it. And that's the same thing with listening. You got to keep your mind focused on what is being said. Hey, I'm Joe. And I'm Rhonda. And we're with The Color of Marriage. Yes. And today we're going to be talking about listening in marriage. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about listening in marriage. Yes. So because that is a very important topic, because if you don't know how to listen in marriage, your marriage is going to be in yes. trouble. And so what does it really mean to listen? What does that really mean to listen? Ask yourself that question before we give the answer to that question. But to you, what does it mean to you to listen? Yes. I can tell you, Proverbs says in verses 19, 27, it says, cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. So that tells you, if you stop hearing instruction, you're gonna stray, I mean, from knowledge. And then we also hear in Proverbs, again, either, Proverbs 8, 18, 2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. So those are two words from Proverbs that tell you about listening and running your mouth. So <laughs> when you hear about listening as it applies to, to, the, to those verses, Listening is taking in the information that you're hearing mm -hmm. without interruption. Mm -hmm. That's what listening is. Taking in the information that you're hearing without interruption so that you can understand it. Because how yes. can you understand something when you interrupt the flow of the information that's coming that in? That you're receiving. That's right. Right. And so many times you interrupt your spouse, you know, when they are trying to say something to you and that doesn't allow them to get their complete thought process out. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to talking about the person who's doing the speaking too. make sure that you're speaking in a way so that the listener can hear you and not interrupt you. Yes, and I would also say make sure you're not speaking because some people think that because they speak very slow and they are talking like this, that that is a better way to communicate. But that may not be a better way because you're taking so long to communicate a simple point. Your spouse may be on a whole nother communication level and they're like, okay. I mean, you talking slow, but I'm still not understanding what you're saying because you're distracting me because of how long you talking. Yes, it's just like a monotone voice. Uh, put some light, life into your voice so that your spouse is more willing to hear what you have to say. I think also put some thought into what you're going to say before you say it. Yes. And you might say, well, why are we talking about the speaker when we're talking about Listening. listening well because in order for the person to listen well the person who is who is speaking should speak well as well so that the person who is listening can gather the information that is being spoken to them without interruption because like yes. you said that's what listening is taking in the information that you're hearing without interruption and i heard it in one of the training videos that we were, that we listened to some time ago, that listening is like being a wide receiver, oh. okay? And being a wide receiver, you have, when, when the ball is passed to you, 
You have to keep your eyes on the ball mm. and see it all the way in until you catch it. And then you can look in other directions because once you take your eyes off the ball, then you lose the ball. And then when you try to find it again, it's kind of too late. The ball can, you can probably, you might catch it. You might fumble it and the ball might get intercepted or you might entirely miss the ball because you took your eyes off of it. And that's the same thing with listening. You got to keep your mind focused on what is being said. And when the quarterback is throwing the ball, he needs to make sure that he's throwing the ball in a way that allows the receiver to see it. And that's why they have the spiral, because when the ball is turning over and over and this and that, then it's kind of hard to catch it like that. That's why it has to be a spiral. So it goes straight into the arms. So when you're speaking, think of yourself as a quarterback. And when you're, when you're speaking, you speak in a way that makes it easier for the listener to hear you. I also want to say, you know, um, in listening, also know your listening style. Like for me, mm -hmm. for example, um, for me to listen to something and fully comprehend and take in, get an understanding, I have to be like either writing it down or I'm mm -hmm. moving my leg or something like that because that's how my brain functions. I have to be moving a little bit in order to receive. Now, my husband, he can sit and he can listen to everything and he, he, and he, he can remember verbatim pretty much word for word what has been said and he takes it in and he receives it. But I don't receive information like that. And so it's very important for you to understand your listening style and your spouse to also understand where they're not getting offended because it looks like you're distracted, but what you're doing is you're really trying to pay attention. You're really trying to get that understanding um, and you're trying to be focused on them, but you have to understand, you, you need to know your, your listening, learning style and your spouse is important for you to know um, your spouse's uh, listening, learning style as well. That way you're, like I said, you're not mm -hmm. speaking too long. You're not using overly big terms. Cause I remember when we first got married, you would be using these big words, this big hmm. terminology. And I'd be like, I don't even know what that means. What you just said. It's like every time I, I turn around, I had to get the dictionary. I go on my, I don't even know if I had a phone then that was doing all of that, but I would have to get the dictionary and look up the word that he was saying, trying to describe the situation and, and that distracted from the conversation. So using big words or terminology or terms that your spouse doesn't understand distracts from your spouse having an understanding of what you're trying to hmm. relate to them. Um, and so it's very important, um, like they tell people when they're speakers, to know your audience, to know Amen. who you're speaking to, to yes. know how to speak to them. Yeah, that is important um, that you do that because you want to make sure that the person that you're speaking to understands what you're saying and you as a speaker, and we'll talk about this more in another video, but you yes. as a speaker, you're responsible for making sure that the person that you're speaking to understands what you're saying. And you may not think that you are, but I'm letting you know that that the speaker, because you're relaying a message, you're responsible for the person who's listening to the message. You re you're responsible to make sure that they understand the message. Now, I'm going to move to a little uh, another different area of listening, because listening does not always happen in the good times of your marriage. Uh, we all can do that very well. We can listen during the good times of our marriage very well. Sometimes you might have some difficulties in that um, because of not paying attention or whatever, but listening is very important during the difficult times of your marriage. And that's where listening becomes the most important because it's harder to hear when there's difficult situations going on than it is when good situations are going on. So the rules kind of change then. 
So if a person is listening to you and they got their eyes closed and head down, don't try to make them look you in your eye. Well, look me in my eye and hear what I got to say. I, I want you to look me. No, maybe they trying to just hear you and, and, and absorb the pain. Yes, the slaps that you're giving to them with your words. Yes, and they're trying <laughs> to absorb them. So they might be doing this. Just say what you got to say. They're yes. hearing you. And then yes. after they have said, after you have said what you said, don't try to automatically make them respond to what you have said because they may not be prepared to do that. They may need processing time, folks. Yes. Um, and, and, and once again, I go back to um, in listening, you need to know your own body. You need to know your triggers. You need to know whenever you're listening to something, mm -hmm. um, how much you can, um, I don't want to say your level you, you can take, but I'm just telling you, I mean, like there is in the, I get up early in the morning. I'm giving you an example. I get up early in the morning, like three, sometimes four o'clock in the morning and I'm doing stuff, praying, whatever. And about, about eight o'clock at night, then I have pretty much exhausted my my patience level i'm pretty much exhausted my um understanding level i'm pretty much like all my words is almost i'm just my, i know my body i'm tired i'm fatigued and i just want to rest mm -hmm. and so that is not the best time for you to want me to hear a long speech for me to hear a, a, a conference. It's not the best time for you to come to me and get my opinion or my thought process or you want to resolve something because I am not in the best mental or physical. And, and I can also say at times spiritual because all of that's connected space. Yes. I can't, I mean, I, I know that I am at a point where I am not going to be, um, 100 percent um even maybe 75 percent in control of maybe how the facial expression i'm gonna give you the tone i might share with you because once again i'm like i know my body i'm mm -hmm. expended I'm, I'm, i mean so I'll, I'll say you know what this is not the right time for me to hear what you have to say for me to give you my honest opinion because my because i'm tired my ears are shutting down because mm -hmm. I'm tired, I'm a little bit more grumpy. I'm a little bit more impatient. I'm a little. I can get a little bit angrier quicker, and um, and I don't want to dishonor my husband or either dishonor my kids if they want to say something with me. Um, mm -hmm. to me, I mean, I can. I'm, once again, we prayer changes things. I most definitely can pray and say, Lord, give me energy, give me strength, and I do that quite often. But I'm just saying have compassion for your spouse give your spouse grace when you know that their level um if they're they're when you know they're tired when you know they're fatigued mm -hmm. or you already know they stressed about something else and you want to come to them with one more thing to burden them and you want them to hear it um it's, it's about finding the right time and believe me when we pray god will give us that window so don't tell me that there's never a good time they, they mm -hmm. always this and that. believe me when we pray god will give you the right timing amen and so as we close this video i want to say this um in another video that i heard i believe it was on focus on the on the family uh, they were talking about how they set us set aside some time where they won't talk about issues that will cause some type of conflict before a certain time and after a certain time. Now they gave they say don't talk about it before nine or don't talk about it after nine. Now some folks might say, well, it might be before ten. And someone will say before 11, someone will say before 6. So you and your spouse need to find yes. the right time. Yes. Uh, you might say, well, let's not talk about anything that's going to cause conflict before 10 or after 6 at night. Yeah. That might be the, the right time for you. So listening is very important in any marriage. Listening is you taking in the information 
that is being spoken to you without interruption. And without judgment. I'm sorry. Yeah. Without judgment as well. Yeah. And, and yeah, definitely without judgment. And, and and pray about putting this into action. And if y'all need help with doing any of this, we do biblical marriage counseling. We do Christian marriage counseling. We can help you with this. We help couples fix and strengthen the broken and weak areas of their marriages using biblical principles, concepts, and resources. You can schedule a courtesy telephone consultation with us at our website if you need that. But in the meantime, I'm Joe. And I'm Rhonda. And we're with The Color of Marriage. Folks, thank you for listening to this video. Until next time, y'all take care. Have a good rest of the day and do what God tells you to do. All right. Bye-bye.